we've got brain power and horsepower, and together we're gonna try to change the rules of engine braking. So you might wanna hang out for a little while and see what we're up to here. So if you don't know, I'm Lake Speed Jr. and you? Peter Lee from Southwest Research Institute. And of course you guys know me, Dino Don from Shavers. Right, so if you're new to the channel, you need to know who we were, right? If you've been hanging around for a while, you already knew all this. But today, it's like the coming together of two different worlds, right? It is, it we is. We got the Dino world, the Tribology world, we're all crashing together. Very exciting today. But there's a really a reason for that. Because, as you know, I love Tribology and Tribology is like the study of friction and wear and lubrication and all three stages of lubrication happen inside this engine yep. specifically on the piston rings and if you've been watching in the past you know we've done a lot of coating testing we have a brand new coating today this is interesting guys so peter since your guys developed this coating why don't you explain what this coating is and how it could be sure. different so this, this is different insofar as that it's a soft coating on the outside and then it becomes harder and more durable. So that soft coating is fantastic for running in, but you don't want that throughout the whole piston ring because there'll be nothing left. So then you go to this hard coating. But here's the difference. It's put down at the same time in the same process. So There's no not two different metals. Not two metals. Like, like it used to be. Yeah. yeah, it's completely one. So you just tune it just towards the end as it's laying it down so it goes soft exactly and so then you don't have any delamination problems right because that's so, the issue before we've yes. done a dual layer coating and it worked, worked, worked good. fairly well yeah, better fairly than well. a regular standard you know single coating absolutely but when we're talking about durability aspect of it there there were a few issues with that especially when you're really pounding on it hard <laughs> when i when you guys told me about this process well you saw the look on my face i'm like really it's the yeah. same material same stuff all you're doing is changing the chemical structure of it yep that's amazing but he didn't tell you the other cool part is that the friction coefficient with this new variable hardness coating is half what the standard coating is. Yes. Well, that was what we found in the test bench. Right. Now we'll see if it's for real. Absolutely. So we've been doing tons of work with their, your guys using the TE77 yep. reciprocating rig where we're taking sections of a real liner, sections of a real piston rig and rubbing it together. We've already kind of, we'll call it, scienced it out a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. Labbed it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But like you said, now it's time to try out for real. So, right. so what we're doing now is we've actually taken the application and put it in our mule motor. This thing's got a lot of miles on it. We actually <laughs> tried to break it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, last time. Yeah. Yeah. We were unsuccessful to that, but we've got it completely rebuilt with this new ring in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through some testing like we used to with some of the oil stuff. We're going to do some endurance right. testing. So we're going to break the engine in like we normally do. You know, a 30-minute break-in, <laughs> roughly 3,000 RPM, 80 to 100 foot-pounds of torque or whatever. And then we're going to take a bunch of samples of the oil and do a checkout on the motor to make sure so that we can record all the way what's happening with that coating. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with the break-in metals, there's always certain break-in metals when we do that break-in. We know what they are, what they normally are with all the other different coatings and we're going to see if and what the change is with this new coating. And the other great thing about this, we have all of our blow-by meters set up. So we actually have an analog blow-by meter and a digital blow-by meter all hooked in series right, together. Right, right. Plus, we're monitoring crankcase pressure, and if that wasn't enough, we even leaked it down before we've run it in. Right. Then we're going to run it in, and then we're going to leak it down again, and then we're going to do the durability testing, and then we're going to leak it down again. Right. And like Don said, we're going to take oil samples, send them back to Southwest Research, analyze all the wear metals in there. So we're going to get a complete picture of what's happening in this engine and what the blow-by effects are, how well it, that ring is breaking. We've in. already yeah. got some good data on that from other rings. Absolutely. So we know where we kind of want to be. Yeah, we, we know yeah. what the single hardness coating does. We know what the dual layer coating mm -hmm. does. So now we're going to find out what the variable hardness coating does. So we should probably shut up and go further down. Let's go have some fun yeah. and play with it and see if we can break it again. So the 30 minute break-in is completed. We've run it in 
at basically 80 foot-pounds of load, around 3,000 RPM for 30 minutes. Now we've stopped the engines. We're gonna take our first oil sample right now. And then we're actually gonna drain the oil out too, get all this oil out, put in some fresh oil, and then we'll carry on with the durability testing. So the first thing we gotta do is take this sample. What we always do is we set a timer and we wait for three minutes and take a sample right from this one spot right at 30 minutes or three minutes after that 30 minute break in which is what we just did and there we go and you can see the oil's already started to change color because everything's wearing in that's what happens which is why we want to get this stuff out because the majority of wear that will ever happen in this engine happens during break-in so it's important to get that dirty oil out of the engine so it doesn't change things later and cause increased wear so First sample down, drain the oil, refill it, and get going again. All right, so we've got the 30 minute run in done. Yep. We've everything, changed the everything oil. Everything fine so far. Yeah, everything looked good. The oil looked pretty decent. Yeah. You know, considering yeah. it's for break in. And again, you, you mentioned before the break in oil, that first 35 minutes or so, it's the oil's going to be the sturdiest right there. That's the highest amount of wear the engine yeah. should ever normally see. Yeah. So it's going to be dirty. So it wasn't surprising that it was darker color and you could see stuff like glitter and all that. It wasn't bad. We've seen way worse. It looks like, you know, a bass boat. That's yeah. bad. That yeah. didn't look like a bass <laughs> boat. Bad. That's like a pearl. There wasn't was <laughs> like metal in it or anything. No, so no, no. Yeah. So anyway, so now we're going to do before we fire it back up is we actually leak down every cylinder before, before we, we ever started it right okay which is the kind of normal procedure we do that every almost every time mm -hmm. and then we're going to check it after our 30 minute run in we're going to check it right now yeah so we're going to and take this we'll check it around and we'll see how much of a difference there is just running it in that that low speed low load mm -hmm. let's find out see what happens all right so this cylinder was 11 percent before So you probably weren't expecting to see the engine apart <laughs> right after you were showing a dyno pull. Well, the whole idea of this test is to validate break-in. Yep. How does the ring perform yep. with this new coating during break-in? So yep. it basically means we gotta take it apart. Look at what's happening. After you know, it, it was a great idea that Peter had to do this too. Mm -hmm. This hasn't been really been done before. We don't, we were talking about this earlier. We, we don't know if somebody that breaks in a motor, does all the tests that we did on the break-in procedure and the first four pulls, and then pull it apart to find out how that coating is actually working. I don't think anybody's done that before. It's, it's gonna require a lot of work. Yes, we have to clean it up, put it all back together, and continue the test, which because the test is not over yet, but what a great idea. Yeah, you know, it's been fantastic, because we can actually see that variable hardness coating. It's been it's really interesting. Yeah. The way some of them are broken in completely, mm -hmm. and some of them haven't quite broken in. And the way that you can see that, and you can actually look at that both in the ring profile, mm -hmm. and you've got some of that to show them, but also on the the, on the leak down data, the, yeah. the leak down data showed oh, absolutely, and it ties up. It, 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 everything ties yeah. together. Yeah. You know, the numbers we were getting on the leak down, you know, like you said, the, the worst leak down number we got, which was actually still pretty good, right. you could tell by actually looking at the ring, because we did this, you could tell by looking yep. at the ring it's that it wasn't there. quite there no. yet. It was almost there, but it wasn't yeah. quite there yet. Right. And the, the cylinder data, right, if you took the cylinder traces with the profilometer, all the cylinders are perfect. Everything's breaking in exactly like yeah. it should. It's beautiful. Yeah. And then looking, taking the microscope and actually looking at that top ring yeah. under the microscope and all of you, and you're like, the one that had the highest leak down, which is almost 10%, which isn't bad for a conventional gap yeah. running with 25 thousandths gap on the yeah. top. Yeah. Yeah. Cold for it to be that. And is, how thin is that ring leak? Who wanna know me? But the reality is, hey, the best ones, were three, yeah. three percent all the way down to three percent. And yeah. on those rings, you could see full wearing, right? Yeah, yep. Full wearing, absolutely. Where the the ring actually did its job yes. and it was holding up, right? Yep. And that's the cool thing about an eight cylinder engine is it's actually eight, eight single tests. cylinder. Yeah, it's eight tests, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, exactly. so all of them have their own unique things because that single manifold, you're not getting the same combustion pressure in all eight cylinders all the time, so. Virtually it, impossible to, to, to happen, yeah. It, this is actually a really cool thing to do to only run it for 30 minutes, 
make four pulls, four pulls. Yeah. and then pull it back apart to be able to check it and see how, how did this pro how did this process work mm -hmm. now we're going to finish the process up after we put it back together and the neat thing was the progression so that we had we leaked it down before we even ran it yep and then we ran 30 minutes yep. and we leaked, leaked it down, down. So and we then four pulls yeah. and then leaked, leaked it down. down right and all the cylinders are all going down yep. you can see it, it every goes. time you yeah. can see it every time as the rings kept get as the ring still kept getting better and better the leak down naturally came down the other really cool part is when we were actually making those dyno sweeps the little check ball on the blow by oh, page. See, that was kind of amazing. Even though it wasn't all the way broken in, it was mostly there. But normally the break-in procedure is where you get most of your blow by, and that little check ball on both the digital meter and the check ball meter wasn't moving that much, which means right from the start, because of the finish on the cylinders mm -hmm. and that ring, it was it was sealed up pretty good. With all the other, we'll call it single hardness, yeah, single, you know, type coatings. Yep. That ball always bounces. It yep. moves it's right crazy. from the beginning. It's virtually uh, impossible to keep right. that from happening. And over, and over time, does it only ever begin to settle exactly. down? And I mean time. I mean hours, hours later. Hours. Did it might settle down? Yeah. The only two times we've ever seen that ball just be stable from the, the from, from the get go. From the get go was it the dual layer dual coating? Layer and the variable hardness coating. Yeah. That's the only, only time, time it's ever happened. Yeah. And I'll say the other thing about this one that was different with the variable hardness coating than the dual layer coating is that the ball didn't even move when we started the engine up. It didn't even bounce up. That was pretty cool. It just stayed yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> we it actually, just laid there. Well, remember, I actually went in just to check and make sure that the motor was actually sealed up. Yeah, she blew air in the engine. I blew sure air in there. It was, was running. Yeah, right. it, was it, it was all running. sealed up. Yeah. Right. We're blowing it was all air sealed in up. the engine. Is that thing broken? Yeah, just no, sure. it, it was working. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it was less than half a CFM on the digital meter from the time it cranked all the way through the break-in procedure. Break yeah. It just didn't move. It just yeah. stayed there. Yeah. It made three, four, I mean, say point three, point four. It's just where it hovered. Yeah. So that's something that's unique we've not seen before. And then even when we made the couple of sweeps, we saw the highest peak torque number we've ever seen yeah. in the engine. So you know, again, it's it's too early to make any conclusions to, to on that. Just show you about the numbers, but you know that's something that we'll do after we after we get to the point where we can do a, put do some endurance stuff, put right. put a bunch of time on it. Then we'll we'll share the the numbers of where we started and, and where we're finishing. Right. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you think this is interesting at all. If you're still watching at this point, you probably do. <laughs> if you've not subscribed already, you should because you don't want to miss the next video when we put it back together, get it back on the dyno, and then do that prolonged Long durability test. Exactly. Because now we know that for break-in, man, this stuff is this it's working. This is it's good. It's working. Yes. The oh, concept. Yeah. Good job, Peter. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it works it is really works. well. Yes, it right. is working. Yeah. Really excited about it. So, Make sure you stay tuned because we got more brain power and horsepower headed your way.